Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing with my Eurythmics discography journey and we have made it to their second studio album from 1983 called Sweet Dreams Are Made of This. After a year and a half of initial commercial failure for the Eurythmics, this album, Sweet Dreams Are Made of This, became a commercial breakthrough for the duo on both sides of the Atlantic. Now, one of the reasons why this era was so memorable and successful for the Eurythmics was because of Annie Lennox's memorable gender-bending imagery, her outfits, and her look in general. Now, I will be listening to the bonus track version of Sweet Dreams Are Made of This, which means there are a few bonus tracks that were added to the album years later, decades later, so I'll be listening to a total of um, 14 tracks. The only song I recall hearing from this album is Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This, and all the other tracks are brand new to me. But anyway, let's get into it with track one, Love Is A Stranger. <laughs> I love it already. Oh my god, I love this melody. That was track one, Love is a Stranger. Oh my god. Where was this song my entire life? God help me. I also felt extra gay listening to this song. I essentially loved everything about this song. The melody, that melody, oh, the chorus, and Annie's vocals, the falsetto when she says, so <gasps> by design, you know it's jealous by nature, false and unkind, it's hard to restrain, and it's totally cool. It touches and it teases as you stumble in the debris, and I want you, and I want you, and I want you. So it's an obsession. I don't do as good as her. <laughs> Love is a stranger in an open car to tempt you in and drive you far away love is a stranger in an open car this is this is a sexy song i imagine that this song was so popular back in 1983 in the clubs and the bars i mean i hope so because it's a certified bop and of course i don't care if i'm overreacting because i love it now this was selected as the third single from the album the single was commercially unsuccessful but it was re-released in 1983, and then it became a hit. Thank God. I would love to hear a remix of this song. There must be so many remixes out there of this particular track. And the synthesizers, oh my God, don't even get me started on the synthesizers. Just, okay, I just have to move on to the next track. <laughs> oh God, if this song was released as a single from a pop star today, it would not only reach number one, but it would stay at number one for like 5,000 weeks. Oh, I also like the, uh, ooh, throughout the song. You hear the, oh, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean. There's also something a little unsettling about this track when it comes to the lyrics. Pulling a stranger into your car and driving away, it's an obsession and I want you. It's an obsession. I want you. But anyway, let's move on to the second track, I've Got an Angel. Oh my god. 
Fuck me. That was track two, I've Got an Angel, and <laughs> the overall production on these tracks, I mean, God help me. And we have David Stewart to thank for that. He is the second member of the Eurythmics, of the duo that makes up the Eurythmics, David Stewart and Annie Lennox. I feel really bad because in my prior video for In the Garden, I didn't even mention him. I think I mentioned him at the beginning when I was introducing the Eurythmics, but I didn't mention him once when I was listening to the album, and afterward, when I was editing the video, I felt bad. <laughs> because I loved the production on In the Garden, so I feel bad for not mentioning him. I love all the strange and quirky sounds on this track. It's so ominous and dark, yet sexy at the same time. It's like you're stranded somewhere on the highway, it's late at night, and there's no one around, and then someone comes by in this dark car, and they say, hey, wanna hitch a ride with me? And it's very ominous, and uh, you don't know if they're a serial killer or who the hell they are, and it just has that dark, yet, I don't know, I can't really explain it. Or maybe I just did, but, um, that's just what I feel when I listen to these songs. Power of Imagination goes right to my head. Goes right to my head and I said, time, it's time, it's time to kill. Time, it's time, it's time to kill. This is another track on the album I quite enjoyed and I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. I also want to comment on Annie Lennox's vocals. Vastly different from their prior album, In the Garden. Um, just the way she, I don't know how to explain it, just the falsetto, I guess, and the way she wails and, um, howls, and it's just, it's very beautiful, but very disturbing and haunting at the same time, and sexy. She has a way of producing a very angelic and heavenly voice, but then in a split second, she could turn around and it could sound ominous and dark and creepy. Anyway, let's move on to track three, wrap it up, and I have an idea of what this song could be about, <laughs> but anyway, let's get into it. That was track three, Wrap It Up, and this is such a wild, fun song vocally and production-wise, but just the quirks in Annie's voice, the woo and ah and me, 
<laughs> I've been watching you for days now, baby. I just love your sexy ways now. You know my love will never stop now. Just put your loving in my box, baby. Wrap it up. I'll take it. And then she goes on to say, No more will I shop around now. You know I've got the best thing in town now. I've seen all I want to see. What's your loving means to me now, baby. Wrap it up. I'll take it. I'm gonna treat you like the queen you are. Give you sweet things from my candy jar. You've got treats you ain't ever used. Give it, give it to me. It won't get abused. Everyone loves a great pop song about safe sex, a song that promotes safe sex and especially during this time in 1983 when the AIDS epidemic was just spreading like wildfire, I imagine. So far, three for three, I've loved all the songs. The vocals, of course, are sublime and so fascinating to listen to and the production is ear candy and I like the stories in the songwriting. So let's move on to track four. I could give you a mirror. That was track four, I could give you a mirror. Very interesting and just as good as the other three songs I listened to. This is a very consistent album and they all sound like songs that should be together on an album. This album flows beautifully from one track into the next. I could give you a mirror to show you disappointments. I could give you a history. Could you ever listen in to me? How could you be so cold when there's a fire burning? How could you be so cold when all the ice is melting? How could you be so cold? <laughs> I am in love with Annie's vocals on this album. They are so eccentric and just so fascinating to listen to, filled with personality. It's never a dull moment listening to this album. She's obviously saying I could give you a mirror so you could see all your own disappointments that you have brought upon me and everyone else and I could give you a history. Could you ever listen in to me? I mean these songs are catchy as hell. The beats and just everything about these tracks. I am in love with this album but is that a surprise? Not really. <laughs> anyway let's move on to track 5, The Walk. <laughs>
That was track five, The Walk. I just forget myself. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the production on this track, the jazzier sound with the horns, but I liked it and I would definitely listen to it again. This is such a strong album from the Eurythmics. It's such a great pop album. I could be contended. I don't need to suffer. You're beautiful. Good to talk to, you make an impression to take my attention, and when you touch my skin, I smell disaster. Step away, walk away, all I want is the real thing. Let's just close our eyes, I just forget myself. Let's just close our eyes, I just forget myself. Walking on pavements, we collect in bars, asleep in the houses, so alone. Looking inside herself, she breaks the glass, turns her head backwards, she's fallen down again. So it looks like, I don't know, maybe she likes talking to this person. They make a great impression and they're very interesting to have a conversation with, but the second they touch her skin, she smells disaster. Step away, walk away. I want the real thing. She's sleeping in houses so alone and she's looking inside herself for something, for the real thing, that's what she wants. So I don't know, maybe she's looking for an actual long-term relationship. She doesn't want a one-night stand or a one-night fling. She just doesn't want to hook up with someone. She wants something real. She wants something more than that. I don't know, that's my interpretation of the song. But anyway, let's move on to track six. Sweet dreams are made of this. track six sweet dreams are made of this and this song is essentially synonymous with the eurythmics when you think of the eurythmics you think of sweet dreams are made of this when you think of sweet dreams are made of this you think of the eurythmics i do think this is their most um popular song and it's their most recognizable song ever honestly i feel like this is one of the most recognizable songs from the 80s it really is a timeless song and everything about this track is perfection the overall production and of course the vocals and the lyrics and the melody the lyrics and the melody of this track are so great sweet dreams are made of this who am i to disagree i travel the world and the seven seas everybody's looking for something some of them want to use you some of them want to get used by you some of them want to abuse you some of them want to be abused it's such an infectious song it's catchy as hell and that throbbing pulsating beat. <laughs> now this was selected, surprisingly, as the fourth single from the album. I'm surprised it wasn't selected as the lead single or the second single or the third single. It was the fourth single. The song did become a worldwide hit and really put the Eurythmics on the map as being a great pop act, a great pop duo, and 
they instantly became recognizable, and I imagine the rest was history. Now, it looks like initially Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart were a couple, but then they broke up. But they continued to work together when they formed the Eurythmics. They became interested in electronic music and bought new synthesizers to play around with. According to Stewart, he managed to produce the beat and riff of this song on one of their new synthesizers. And Annie, on hearing it, said, what the hell is that? And started playing on another synthesizer. And beginnings of the song came out of the two dueling synths. According to Annie, the lyrics reflected the unhappy time after the breakup of their prior act, The Tourists, which after that breakup, they formed the Eurythmics. Commenting on the line, some of them want to use you, some of them want to be abused, Annie said that people think it's about sex or S&M, it's not about that at all. Stewart, however, thought the lyrics too depressing, added the hold your head up, moving online to make it more uplifting. According to Stewart, the record company did not think the song was suitable as a single as it lacked a chorus. However, when a radio DJ in Cleveland kept playing the song from the album and it generated a strong local response, the label decided to release it. So I guess that's why it was released as the fourth single because the label thought it wasn't catchy enough to be a single. I mean, thank God for that DJ in Cleveland, because if it wasn't for him, I imagine the song would never have been released as a single, and God only knows what that would have meant for the Eurythmics and their future albums and their future career if this song never became a single. Anyway, let's move on to track 7, Jennifer. That was track 7, and Jennifer, and this is, um, it's another wonderful song on the album. It was a very interesting experience listening to this song. I definitely went on a journey listening to it. It's kind of epic, I won't lie, and I like the sound effects of the waves, the waves of the ocean. And the second I heard the waves, I was kind of beginning to make the connection. The title of the song is Jennifer, and we hear waves. So I was thinking perhaps the song would be about a girl who commits suicide or she drowned. I don't know if that's the intention of the lyrics. Jennifer with your orange hair. Jennifer with your green eyes. Jennifer in your dress of deepest purple. Where are you tonight? And then... She goes on to say, underneath the water. But just when you think the song's over, there's still another couple minutes left, and it's purely instrumental with the synthesizers. And it was reminding me of M83. It was so wonderful to listen to, and I quite enjoyed that part of the song also. What I also like about this album is it sounds very fresh and modern. And I guess that's because a lot of musicians today are being inspired by 80s synth pop. 
So maybe that's why it sounds fresh and new and modern, but these do sound like songs that could have been released today. And that just goes to show you how influential musicians like the Eurythmics were on today's musicians. Anyway, let's move on to track 8. This is The House. That was track 8, This Is The House, and this is another song I enjoyed. Initially, I didn't know what to make of it. The first minute or so, I wasn't really warming up to it. But then towards the end, I grew to like it, and I think it's a nice inclusion on the album. There's some Spanish that opens the song. I like the horns on this track also. And just the overall production, of course, is fire, just like all the other tracks. Um, I don't think the lyrics or melody is as memorable as some of the other tracks, but for me, what makes this song great is the overall instrumental, the production, and those horns, and I liked it. It's... I was gonna say it's not one of my favorite tracks on the album, but... That might be the case. It might not be one of my favorite tracks, but I still quite liked it and I would listen to it again. Now this was selected as the first single from the album and it's a good song, but I don't think this is lead single material. I don't know who's choosing these lead singles from the Eurythmics albums, but they're doing a very bad job. <laughs> I had the same problem on their prior album, In the Garden, where Never Gonna Cry Again was chosen as the lead single from In The Garden, which I still think was a bad choice. The song was commercially unsuccessful and failed to chart. This is the house, this is the hill, this is the story, it's a little thing, a lock of hair, an invisible smoke trail, nothing there but the dust and the rust, everything changes. This is the house. And she also says, this is your picture, it's in black and white, this is the family, have you a party, there's a crack in the ceiling, and there's an open door, nothing there but the dust and the rust. So overall, I did enjoy the track, it's just not one of my favorites, but I can still appreciate the overall production on the track. So let's move on to track 9, Somebody Told Me.
That was track 9, Somebody Told Me, and this is such a sassy song, it's filled with attitude. And uh, it's a lot of fun, just like a lot of the other tracks. Um, I like the personality Annie brings to it. Somebody told me something about you, I didn't believe it, I just couldn't believe it. I'm still reeling, because I just can't take the blow. Well, there's laughter and love, and there's a lot of pain. I never want to see your pretty face again. I also like this part here, I'm full of forgiveness. If you're just twisting, I'm a silly little saint with a halo of smiles, but it makes no difference. I never want to see your pretty face again. Oh well, oh well, oh well, oh well. Somebody told me, somebody told me, somebody told me, somebody told me. These songs are so infectious, they really do get stuck in your head, and um... This is a beautifully crafted pop album. So let's move on to track 10, The City Never Sleeps. Battles track 10, This City Never Sleeps, wow. Um, another song I really liked, and I don't really know what to say, I just, I really liked it. I like the progression of the song, and um, I just liked everything about it. It's a very atmospheric song. I like the ambience, and um, just the overall repetition of some of these lyrics, and you can hear the sounds of, I guess, trains in the background, and I just, I like the vibe, the sound of this track, and um, just the overall ambience, so I would definitely listen to this track again. You can hear the sound of the underground trains, you know it feels like distant thunder, you know there's so many people living in this house, I don't even know their names. I guess it's just a feeling in the city. This track was kind of reminding me of Grace Jones in a couple ways. I'm looking at the track list of all the songs I've listened to, all 10 songs, and every single one of these songs I would listen to again, hands down. But we have made it to the bonus tracks of Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This, which means there are four extra tracks I'll be checking out. And the first one is track 11, Home is Where the Heart Is. <laughs>
Battles Track 11, Home is Where the Heart Is, one of the bonus tracks, and I like this track. Um, it's unexpected, it's quite different, and um, it's a little experimental, just like some of the other tracks I've listened to, and I like the overall, of course, production, and just a very interesting track to listen to. I liked the, um, there was... A specific note on this song. I think it was a synthesizer or it was some sort of flute. You know what I'm talking about. It was the do, 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 do. Home is just a story. A room without a view. A room without a view. A pretty picture on the wall. Memories of you. Home is where the heart is. At least that's what they say. I would listen to this song again. I think it's a great inclusion on this album. And once again, Annie's vocals are just wonderful, filled with um, personality and I like the whistling and um, just some of the things she does with her voice. Uh, she really goes for it and that's what I can really appreciate about Annie Lennox. So let's move on to the second bonus track, Monkey Monkey. That was track 12, a Monkey, a Monkey, and um, I mean, the track speaks for itself. <laughs> there were some interesting beats on this track that were obviously the synthesizers, but they kind of sounded like a monkey. Like the... I don't really know how to explain it, but it actually did sound like a monkey in parts. There was something a little animalistic about this track. Um, just the subtle vocals and... A very experimental song, and quirky, and weird, and I liked it. Anyway, let's move on to the third bonus track, Baby's Gone Blue, track 13. As it did so, her body slumped backwards. At first it was when I saw her eyes on sleeping. That was track 13, and Babies Gone Blue. What the hell? <laughs> wow. Another very... I mean... It was so... I don't even know what to say. There is this girl who is dead. And we hear this conversation happening between these two detectives or paramedics, and I guess they found her dead. Where, I don't know, but she is cold. They're saying she's unmistakably anywhere, dead. Um, look at the mess in her party dress. Baby's gone blue. And then we hear Annie's haunting vocals. Who are you going to send flowers to? 
Who are you going to send flowers to? They are unmistakably dead. She was oversleeping. Oh yes, he called her name. Did you hear about that? Ah, 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 sweetheart! Crash out in a drunken stupor, alcohol straight. So we went to the picture. Look at that mess. Baby's gone blue. Alcohol hanging sickly in the air. At first the scene that she was only sleeping. Oh yes, she was dead. Her body slumped backwards. At first it's seen that she was only sleeping. The first thing that hit him. Huh. It's a very scandalous song about um, this death, what happened, how did she die, and what have you. Honestly, this is the perfect Halloween song. I'm gonna be adding this to my Halloween playlist. <laughs> So if you like slightly disturbing songs with disturbing vocals and stories and lyrics, this is the track for you. We have made it to the end of the album, track 16, Satellite of Love, the fourth bonus track. Satellite's gone up to the sky. I watched it for a little while. That was track 16, Satellite of Love, and out of all the bonus tracks, this one is my favorite. Um, I thought it was a great pop song, and it's very catchy. I like the chorus, Satellite of Love, Satellite of Love. I like the overall just vibe of the track. I like the, uh, obviously production. I like the mood. I like, I don't know, I just like the feeling of the song and how it made me feel. Satellites gone up to the skies, things like that drive me out of my mind. I watched it for a little while. I like to watch things on TV. Satellite of love. Satellites gone way up to Mars. Soon it will be filled with parking cars. I watch it for a little while. I like to watch things on TV. And then there's this ominous part where she says, I've been told that you've been bold with Harry, Mark, and John, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to Thursday with Harry, Mark, and John. That was all 10 tracks plus four bonus tracks of Sweet Dreams Are Made of This by the Eurythmics. And this was such a great album from them. First and foremost, the overall production um, from David Stewart was remarkable. Every single one of these tracks, production-wise, was on point. I wasn't bored for a second listening to any of these tracks. The synthesizers and the sound effects, it's very slick and, at the time, perhaps innovative and different and just very memorable. It's quite ominous and dark but sexy and epic at the same time. Annie Lennox's vocals also were such a strong highlight on this album. I said it already, but I'm gonna say it again, filled with personality and very quirky, and she isn't afraid to go to certain places with her vocals, the deep breaths, and her deeper register. And like I said already, she can make that switch instantly from heavenly 
beautiful voice to dark and scary and deep. She sounded great on each and every one of these tracks. So the production is a 505 and her vocals are 505 as well. I also liked the songwriting. At times, it's quite bizarre, obviously. But other times, it's quite simple. They sing about a breakup and they sing about sex and love and very dark things also like murder. I personally don't think the songwriting is the highlight on this album. What is the highlight is the overall beats, production, and Annie's vocals. A lot of these songs are earworms, they get stuck in your head. And I would gladly listen to each and every one of these songs again. Obviously, I feel like the most experimental songs are the bonus tracks. It's just a very highly engaging album, and I wasn't bored for a second. It keeps you on your toes, it keeps you invested and interested, and um, it's fun to dance to. A lot of what the F moments. <laughs> I won't lie. What did you guys think of the album and what are your impressions of it? Maybe you don't like it as much as me. Tell me why. But this is one of those albums I want to listen to again. Immediately. Right away. I mean, if you love synth pop, if you love 80s synth pop, any synth pop, you can't go wrong with this album. And this album is for you. And sometimes I find with albums like this where there's one song in particular that is a mega smash. For example, Sweet Dreams Are Made This. Sweet Dreams Are Made This is the biggest hit on this album, obviously. So sometimes when you go into an album like this, you think, well, Sweet Dreams Are Made This might be the only decent song on the album and all the other songs might be okay, but not as good as the mega smash. But in this album's case, Sweet Dreams Are Made This isn't the only great song. There are so many other great songs on here as well. So I think that's all I have to say on the album. And in my next Eurythmics video, we will move on to their third studio album from 1983. Did they release two albums in 1983? Sweet Dreams came out in January of 1983 and Touch came out in November of 1983. Ooh, they were busy. It makes sense. I guess Sweet Dreams blew up and they were just ready to put out their next album to capitalize on the hype, I guess. I don't know. But I'll be checking out Touch, their third studio album in my next Eurythmics video. So look out for that video next time. And thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. You can message me. You can say, hey, how are you? And I'll see you next time. Take care.